Oh, this is a state where the lumberjack appreciation is strong. Milwaukee, Wisconsin on the shores of Lake Michigan for the battle to see who is best in the U.S. The championships of the Steel Timber Sports Series. The guys that get to this level have committed their life to doing this sport. If I cut every discipline to my best ability, I could win this. It's not just always 90 feet to first base. It's making sure that your bat and your ball and your glove, in this instance, your axes and your saws, are dialed up 100% for the day. Every moment I have is for this opportunity. There's a crowd. They're fired up. I'm fired up. Let's take this to the next level. I got a shot at winning. I got a legitimate shot at winning. This is the biggest event we have in the U.S. There's a lot of prestige behind it, and there's a lot of emotion that goes into it as well. Everybody's going for the win. Welcome to Milwaukee. Welcome to the Steel Timber Sports Series presented by Ram U.S. Championships for 2017. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that great all-American city, great sports town, and a perfect place to bring together the top 20 choppers and sawyers in these United States for this competition. Of course, we split them up into two pools of 10 each, and that's how we'll do it today. Tommy Sanders here with Kevin Holtz, and we look at Pool A, Pool B. We'll start with Pool A today, and it's loaded. Both pools are loaded with talent, but Pool A has the distinction of having the young man who's going for his fifth consecutive national title, Matt Coburn. Yeah, you can't argue with history. Four titles under his belt, and the man just doesn't make mistakes. But there's a lot of top-notch competitors in this pool hoping that he's going to make mistakes and they can gobble up some of those Ram overall points. Guys like Nathan Waterfield and Dave Jewett out of the Northeast region. Of course, Matt Slingerland also just growing tremendously in this sport. And uh, i got to be honest, putting on a few pounds as well. He's, he's bulking okay. up between last year and this year. So look for bigger hit power out of Matt Slingerland. So a great, tough pool. All those guys look and become one of the top four to advance and also kind of gunning for Matt Coker as well. All right, we got these guys, 10 of them competing today. You must be in the top four when it's all said and done if you want to advance to the finals. We're going through six disciplines today, and Kevin, number one is a toughie, the springboard shot. Yeah, there's no wading into this one. This is both feet jump into the pool. Here we go. The springboard chop was the original lumberjack ladder. Competitors are going to start out cutting about a four-hit pocket roughly 36 inches off the stage. They'll insert a board, they'll go up another three feet, cut another pocket, a second board. They're then gonna chop through this 11 inch white pine block about 80 to 90% of the way through before they turn and slash it off from the back. First heat of the springboard chop and we are just about underway. On stand number one from West Virginia, the big man Chris Bradshaw from the Finger Lakes region of New York on stand two, Matthew Bolt and Mike Forrester of Oregon on three. And Matt Slingerland of North Carolina up on board number four. All right, Matt Slingerland is up on board number one on pole number four. Matt has really packed on some LBSs. I, I didn't want to say that to his face the other day, but uh, he spent a lot of time in his new job, and I, I, he's packing on some muscle here. I don't know how this is going to uh, translate to power in the springboard event. Look at Matt Bolton, a virtual neighbor of mine, up on pole two, second board. This is an event where Bolton really is looking to capitalize on some Ram points. Right now, though, it is all about young Matt Slingerland around the backside of this block already. Matt Slingerland, the only one of these four to qualify for the finals last year. Looks like he's on his way to making a good start of it this year, and he's off. So Matt Slingerland will post the best time so far, of course, with the win in this heat in under a minute. I'm glad that I won my heat and I have a lot of things to pick up from here on out, but I know what I need to clean up, so I'll be ready next time. Heat number two, three competitors in this one right here on stand number one. It's going to be Will Roberts. Will Roberts after an absence from the Steel Timber Sports Series, a competitor that came up through the college ranks. He was in Groton, New York. Jeff Skirvin, one of our West Coast guys in this competition right here. And another guy from Wisconsin on stand number three. Of a family that's long been associated with lumberjacking, Cassidy Shear. 
Well, it's interesting for Cassidy Shear, too, because as you mentioned, Tommy, the Shear name synonymous with lumberjacking. Cassidy, most famous for speed climbing, uh, boom running, water events, log rolling, but he's really looking to establish himself as a chopper sawyer. And, and the point was raised in the competitor meeting at the start of the day that uh, it sometimes is not fair the way some of the uh, the ranking systems work. And he says, you know, I've, I've grown so much in the past couple of years that I feel like I'm being slighted and I'm not getting the credit I deserve. So this is his chance. This is his chance to post those numbers. Time to beat about 55 and a half seconds. Heat number one, Matt Slingerland. Not going to reach that, but Cassidy Shear and Will Roberts. Bang, bang, one and two in this heat. Big smile from Cassidy Shear. He knows that, that, that split second equates to Ram overall points, and that's what he's looking for. Well, here we go with the final heat from Pool A. Springboard chop, tough guy, all around tough guy. Super Dave Jewett wears that gray jersey, which signifies that he is from the Northeast. There are eight of them in here, including Nathan Waterfield as well. Both these guys came up through the college ranks and wearing the blue from the Mid Atlantic. Five Mid Atlantic competitors, and one of them, our defending champion right here, Matt Coker. Well, Tommy, nobody's going to argue. This is our marquee matchup. These are our top three seeds in Pool A. And look at the synchronized cuts from both Jewett and Waterfield. Coger just fumbling a little bit, but look at him pull ahead as he moves into this second board. Time to beat 55-38 for Matt Slingerland. And some hesitation going on for, for Koger and Waterfield as they get on top of that second board. Jewett with a big open face. He's got great slope going to this block. There's a lot to be said for the angle. In fact, he's even got so much there, he stepped down on the top and he's shortening the face up so there's less resistance for the chips to pop out. Koger around in the back already at about the 45 second mark. There it is, Koger. He's gonna be the defending US champion with top points in pool A. This is the moment as a competitor where you're just wishing that one last hit would have been enough. The milliseconds are ticking away. You know, it, it's semifinals day. This probably won't matter if, if for Matt to move on, but while he's going for championship number five, a little bobble like that could be win versus lose. Yeah, it's always good to win, you know, but that was a good cut for me. Uh, it's been a while since I cut him in under 50 just this year, so. Uh, I got a few more in my belt for there, so hopefully I can put them all together this weekend. Well, one discipline down and no shockers yet, at least at the top of the leaderboard, Kevin. Matt Koger picking up where he left off last year. Yeah, the, the surprise for me, though, I guess a pleasant surprise for this guy, Cassidy Shear sitting in third right now in the springboard. He, uh, I think, had a little chip on his shoulder at the competitors meeting. He was ranked pretty low in a lot of these disciplines, and he came out swinging. Absolutely. He'll, he'll be a man to watch today. All these guys are. First discipline is down. We got five more to go. We'll be right back in Milwaukee. Last four years, you know, four time US champion, and, uh, you know, I could potentially five be as the drive for five, but uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that can go wrong, and sometimes it's, it's on the day, you know, who's performing the best. And I guess if I just put my best foot forward and I compete the best I can, and if I lose, then, well, I can't really say too much about that. I just know I need to just. Uh, Maybe do a little bit more mental preparation, maybe a little bit more physical preparation, and just focus in a little bit more on it. The Steel Timber Sports Series on ABC is brought to you by Ram, powered by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. Duluth Trading, designed and tested by tradesmen. And John Deere, nothing runs like a deer. Timber Sports Series presented by Ram. U.S. Championships 2017 going on here in Milwaukee, ready for discipline number two, and that is the Stock Saw, Kevin. Yeah, the Stock Saw event, this is the one where you will win or lose by the narrowest of margins of all of our disciplines here today. These guys are going to make two cuts, one down, one up, in four inches of wood, and this event will be won or lost by hundreds, if not thousands, of a second. Quick look at our Ram overall points. No surprise, as we said at the top, with Matt Coger, defending champion there. Some new faces, relatively new faces. Cassidy Shear doing very well in the first event. And Will Roberts back in the mix this time around and looking pretty good. Heat number one in this event, which can be something of an upsetter. 
you don't keep your mind on your business here, get through the stock saw. That's what it's going to take for our first two competitors, Matthew Bolton of New York and Cassidy Shear. Looking good, currently in third place in overall points. At the Steel Stock Saw event, so many things have been equalized. They've, they've matched the wood, they've matched the saws. Our competitors are all exceptional. If, if a discipline like springboard comes down to a second or a half second, this is going to come down to tenths and hundreds of seconds. These guys have to be so intent on every last little detail getting to the block, making sure they're, they're, they're cutting that light as quick as possible, getting the saw to the block. It's unreal how, how little it takes to lose this discipline. Absolutely have to have a complete run for success in the stock saw. Oh, there it is, oh. Matt Bolton on stand number one. That is a game-ending mistake for Matt Bolton. He whipped on that switch over from cut one to cut two. He went back to attempt to try to get that cut in. You see him, he's looking for that line. These guys only get four inches of wood to make two cuts in. Matt Bolton is kind of grimacing a bit. I think he knows that he may have crossed over into the danger zone, into the uh, the uncuttable wood. Let's watch this cut from Cassidy Shear. Beautiful, clean, technical cut. Great to view through the face shield, apparently. He is consistent in thickness. He is straight down through the block. The shortest distance through between two points is always a straight line. Well, official word in from Rich Hallett. He crawled around under that block, and there is purple line remaining. He did not, as the rules say, sever the purple line. There's your time. Real good time for Cassidy Shear there to take the lead after a single heat here. 10.96, 17.66 for Matt Bolton. Heat number two with the time to beat of 10.96 is going to be Will Roberts. To do a little bit better, had a bit of a slow start. Discipline number one, the springboard chop. Stand number two, Matt Slingerland, who has had a great start to his day. He's up there in the points. Watch this event close. This is, again, where tenths and hundreds of a second Ooh. are going to separate first from fifth place. Trouble for Robert because he had a bobble on that down cut. Matt Slingerland, an 11 second run unofficially. That is not going to be good enough for the lead. Let's go back and watch Will Roberts here. Very quick to the wood. Look at how thin he is, though, at the top. And at that point, all it takes is a little bit of a miscue. That saw starts to run out. Unfortunately, very close to the end of the block, you waste a tremendous amount of time in the wood just to go back and reset and do it all over again. Nathan Waterfield looking to make up some points there. Had a, himself a bit of a slow start in the springboard chop. He'll be going up against the man who's tops in points right now, and of course winds up tops in points all the time for the last four years, Matthew Coger. Oh, and a bobble from stand number one, Waterfield. Just a small flick of the chain break. Didn't activate anything, didn't slow him down, but almost missed the grip on the top handle that saw. Shoves it through. Look at the thick disc over on stand number two, though, for Matt Koger. He's looking around for that purple line. Boy, thin to win. Look at this first cut from Waterfield. Here's where head judge Rich Hallett is going to be watching things closely. We've got to make sure that this is a complete disc all the way around and that there's the, the perimeter, the margin is preserved. I literally was making the cut thinking to myself, here we go again, another DQ under the belt. Maybe I can just have fun for the rest of the show and just look forward to next year, you know? And I mean, I've never cut one thinner than that. Look at that. Unbelievable. Stand number two, Matt Koger disqualified. This is our four-time reigning champion. Looking for number five, and there you can see at the bottom of that cut, and then on the near side towards the tip of the bar, just chewing through that line. Well, there you see that DQ puts our defending champion, Matt Koger, bottom. Ram overall point situation with one heat left to go. The stock saw Cassidy Shear stays on top with a 10.96. Ready to go with the final heat of the stock saw here. Pool A, Super Dave Jewett from Pittsburgh, New York on stand number one. Going up against another one of our top seeds in this competition, Jeff Skirvin from Washington State. A few years ago, I, I dubbed Dave Jewett Captain Sixth Place. 
in the uh, the stock saw event. He was just kind of welded into that position. And, and we had a nice talk about it, or as nice as I am with Dave. And I said, Dave, just go for it. What, what's the worst that can happen? You disqualify and maybe you finish eighth or tenth, depending on how many guys are in the pool. And he sort of turned things around. I'm very curious to see how this cut goes. It looks good so far. Clean, thin. Skirvin, though. As you recall, Skirvin posted a world record pace cut in New York City just two years ago, but disqualified for a, a safety glasses violation. Skirvin can run a stock song. Well, there you go, and look at that margin of victory for Cassidy Shear. Oh boy, pretty thin, and that's gonna qualify for our John Deere Nothing Runs Like a Deer performance. Cassidy Shear winning the stock saw, a great performance in both of the opening disciplines for Cassidy Shear. Maybe surprising a few people, definitely surprising a few people. Well, Matt Coger, a DQ in the early going. Kevin, a disaster for Matt Coger, and this is what a disaster does for your Ram overall points from first place all the way down to sixth. It's a long way outside that bubble. Only four competitors are going to advance in the semifinals. He's got his work cut out for him, and we're running out of disciplines for him to pick up points in. While all our 10 are picking up their axes again, we will have a standing block when we come back. So just who are these guys? What do they do for a living? Are they professional lumberjacks, as in a full-time job? These are just a few of the questions we're often asked about professional lumberjack athletes. To answer these questions, here's Adrian Flicks with the Duluth Trading Flick Facts. The Steel Timber Sports Series puts professional athletes against each other head to head. But it's not like you see on Sunday in the NFL. It's more like the Olympians. They pursue timber sports for the love of the game. There is cash, there is prizes, but there's also honor and there's integrity and history. The long-standing tradition that started in the woods and now goes as fast as it can on the steel timber sports stage. We have a full complement of professions, how these guys pay their bills beyond just swinging an ax and a saw. More than three quarters of the competitive field actually does work in the woods for a living. Whether it's log buyers, foresters, guys who are out cruising timber, or other forms of natural resources or wildlife type management. On the other end of the spectrum, we've got a lot of pressed white collars. Doctors, lawyers, artists, and even some school teachers fill out the steel timber sports ranks. So these competitors are swinging axes and saws, not for fame or fortune, but because they love it. Welcome back to Milwaukee German Fest in full swing here at the lakefront on this beautiful weekend in Wisconsin. And Wisconsin native Cassidy Shear atop the leaderboard and our favorite coming in, the defending champion Matt Koger, all the way down to sixth. Ran overall points, a bit of drama on the way as we head into the standing block, Kevin. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked. Honestly, the Cassidy Shear is doing this well, great for him, and he is just gobbling up those Ram overall points. In this standing block chop, though, we've got a lot of tough choppers. These guys are facing a 12-inch round lathe-turned white pine piece of timber. They're going to chop halfway through the front side of this block, run around to the back side, finish from the back side, sort of simulating the felling of a tree in the woods. Uh, today is bonus time. It's my first year in the series. I squeaked through my qualifier. Uh, but I knew I had potential to do really well. Uh, this is a great event. People are cheering and clapping for you. We get to chop and saw wood on a huge stage. And uh, yeah, having fun, number one. Uh, and that makes me feel good. And when I feel good, I chop good. Jeff Skirvin on stand number one. Jeff Skirvin currently third. Ramp overall points at this point. Matt Slingerland. Stand number two, and our leader in points on stand number three, it's Cassidy Shear after two disciplines. This is a star-studded heat to start off the standing block competition. Well, Tommy, I think a lot of eyes are on stand number three. Cassidy Shear making the transition. He's been a chopper and Sawyer, but more famously known for his speed climbing and log rolling, and is putting on a clinic in this semifinal round. Beautiful open for that block. That is a, a great, clean, technical cut. Left a little bit of far wood, but he's, he's saving that for the end. That's going to be the bit of wood that he's just going to drive through. There it is. That is a beautiful, technical cut for Cassidy 
this year. Let's go back and watch Cassidy Shear. He knows he's got a good block. Watch him take this on the near side, goes to the far side, and finishes it off. I've had a good day so far. I just try to take the approach of going 1-0. and And uh, yeah, feeling good. It's all coming together today. Yes, and I'm, this is my inspiration right here. Matty Sling. Cassidy Shear keeps proving it. He's got some chopping and sawing chops, so to speak. How about that first place finish? 1835, a good time. Standing block met Slingerland, second place, 19.83. And Jeff Skirvin with 31.16 came in here in good shape, but now he's leaving himself vulnerable to a drop in overall points. Coming into the final heat, standing block chop on stand number two, Mike Forrester of Oregon. And on stand number three, I don't know if I've ever said this before, but after three disciplines, currently in sixth place in Ram overall points, the man who won the last four championships looking for his fifth consecutive, Matt Koger. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. Mike Forrester on stand two, four-time champ in stock saw DQer Matt Koger on stand number three. He is not letting him hold that back though. Oh, oh no. Forrester down on stand number two. This is reminiscent of Pigeon Forge where he picked up a chip going around the standing block. Something went terribly wrong for Forrester, but uh, Matt Koger off in the mid to low 17 second range. Forrester just flat out. Watch Mike Forrester here, two down hits, followed by two up drivers. Those are the finishing blows on the front side of this block. And as he goes to scoot himself around the back side, he steps on a chip, completely loses his footing, and comes down hard on one of those metal dogs, it looks like, with his left arm. Ah, crushing fall for Mike Forrester. And of course, the important story of that heat, Matt Koger recovering nicely from a stock saw debacle. All right, I'm over here with Mr. Matt Koger, the winner of the standing block chop for pool A there with an excellent cut coming off 17 seconds there. They're gonna ask the tough questions. You know, you had a great springboard, you come out in the stock saw, you get disqualified. Uh, you know, what's the, how's your game, your mental game coming into the standing block knowing that you gotta get some points here after not getting any points in that stock saw? If you advance, you advance. If you don't, then, well, you know what you got to work on for next year. So it's just, just take it in a stride and uh, see what happens. There's your Ram overall points after the standing block. Three disciplines into this one right here. Cassidy Shear still on top, and Matt Koger doing what he had to do to get right back into the thick of it. He wins the standing block, and now it's time to start looking at that bubble, that fourth place, fourth and above. The only ones who move on to the finals, and they're on fourth place. Dave Jewett, and right below him, another guy who's a keen competitor, Nathan Waterfield. Both of these competitors know each other well. They both run around the Northeast region, compete against each other, and they both are carrying a very similar skill set. So this is going to be one to watch as we get into the last few disciplines. That third, fourth, fourth, fifth slot is going to be a, a hotly contested battle. Jewett and Waterfield going for that fourth spot, and a perfect, perfect discipline coming up for that. We'll have the single buck when we return. Steel Timber Sports Series U.S. Championships 2017 coming to you from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, here in the state of Wisconsin. The name Shear is often associated with chopping and sawing and showmanship. And Cassidy Shear showing off a little bit for the, the rest of his competitors in Pool A this time around, Kevin. Yeah, Cassidy, I think, had a little bit of a chip on his shoulder in the competitors meeting because he was seated in the lowest bracket in every discipline. And I guarantee you that's going to be changing for next season because he's at the top of the heap in terms of Ram overall points. He's going to get a chance to grab some more Ram overall points in the single buck event. These competitors are going to be running a single buck saw, a one-man saw. It's over six feet long of tool steel that has been cut out on a water jet CNC or a laser jet CNC and then has about 40 hours of hand filing and tuning that goes into these amazing machines. First tee to the single buck and how about your Ram overall points leader right there in position number one, stand number one. It's Cassidy Shear going up against this man in this heat. Jeff Skirvin, West Coast guy from Washington State. 
Uh, Cassidy kind of mentioned in the competitors meeting, he says, you know, you've got me going in the first heat it's of every single discipline. And, it, and arguably so, based on the current rule system, it's based on past performance and so on and so forth. He hasn't had the past performance. Guess what, Cassidy? Next year, you're going to be going in some of the later heats for sure. Yeah, he perceived that as a disadvantage going early. I think he's got the young man fired up here for sure. Yeah, I, I think he came in with a little bit of a, a feeling a little bit hurt. And uh, now he's going to kind of throw it in everybody's face as he rolls through this single butt saw. But it's going to be Skirvin right now who's running away with this heat. Big noodles hanging out of the front of this thing, but no! Uh-oh, uh-oh. Rich Hallett's gonna go have a quick look at this cut from Cassidy Shear. The ruling has to be, is it cuttable wood? In other words, could he legitimately pick the saw back up and finish a cut, or is it a small fiber that wouldn't support the weight of the saw? And apparently, Rich Hallett has made the ruling that it was not a cuttable piece of wood left there, and Cassidy Shear is going to get that time. Yeah, Cassidy Shear is going to pick up that time, and that time is good enough for first place. 17.45 seconds, and Jeff Skirvin right behind. 17.78. I didn't get into the series last year. I thought I should have been here. And I started this year ranked 26th or something and uh, squeaked through my pool. Then they re-ranked everybody for the finals. I was the last seed. And uh, that, that got me a little worked up, but I train hard, staying positive, having fun. Things come together. I love it. Heat number two, and here we go with a couple of guys that really need a good finish here, need a good effort in this single buck. They are out of the top four in points currently. That's Will Roberts right there. Stand number one, Will Roberts from New York State, Groton, New York. Going to be going up against Matthew Bolton. Both these guys from the Northeast region, both these guys running J.P. Mercier single buck saws. Not a uh, inexpensive piece of tool steel, but right now it is all about Will Roberts using length to his advantage. Look at Bolton though, Ooh, wow. whoa. Nice race. Will Roberts was running away through the top and midsection of that log, and, and then it's like just like he forgot that the wood got smaller at the bottom. He, he didn't get the horsepower back on. Matt Bolton being, uh, let's say, a little closer to the stage, if you will, powered through the bottom of that log. That was a close one there. Going to be Will Roberts on top, though, 15.36 versus Matt Bolton's 15.53. And they are one and two after two heats. Matt Koger, after leading the event, falling all the way down to sixth Ram overall points. Ready to continue his rampage toward the finals up against Mike Forrester. Mike Forrester who suffered a pretty frightening fall a little earlier today. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. Two exceptional Sawyers, two exceptional saws. One guy who's, who's fighting back from a stock saw debacle, the other guy who's fighting back from a standing block debacle. This is going to be a tight heat, Tommy. Oh, oh a hang up from Koger. Still pulls off the win. Forrester with a hang up. The bottom of the block is not kind in the single buck Ooh. event. What, what ends up happening is you've got these guys putting exceptional amounts of force through the middle of the block. Then you get down to the bottom. And, and things change drastically. You go from a full diameter log to now only just a small number of teeth on a small portion of timber, and that's when the hang-ups happen. Final heat, pool A. Single buck competition, Super Dave Jewett. The world record holder, he has done it all in this particular discipline. Never know what's gonna happen. Gonna be going up against another tough guy. The single buck, Matt Slingerland. Dave Jewett currently hanging in there, fourth place. Ram overall points. No one has studied this discipline more than that man right there, Dave Jewett. When Matt Slingerland came on the scene, his dad Mike said, saw like Dave Jewett. And here these guys are in the marquee matchup, the top 
two ranked guys in this pool and a difficult moment for Matt Slater at the top. Maybe trying a little bit too hard to take down Dave Jewett. Well, as I mentioned, Dave Jewett, one of the, the ultimate clinicians in terms of the single buck event. Look at the noodles just flying out of this saw. Notice the nose of the saw disappearing into the block. Every inch of this saw is being utilized to its maximum potential. The, the philosophy is that every time you change directions with the saw, you're wasting time not cutting. So you use every last two. Dave Jewett with a time of 13.38. Handily puts away the top spot in the single buck competition. Came in here in fourth place and ram overall points, but fairly vulnerable down there at just 18 points. He's gonna bolster up his bid to make it to the final. All right, I'm up here with Dave Jewett. A great cut in the single buck. Always expecting a good cut from you. You're so fun to watch in that event. Now, you seem a little disappointed with that cut. Tell me what went wrong there. Yeah, I, I, uh, I have to cut perfect, you know. People think I just kind of get up there and, and make a good cut every time, but every stroke has to be perfect. And uh, the top of the log's been haunting me lately, and if you fall behind at the top of the log, you got to play catch up. So uh, it just is, it is what it is. It's just, you know, we're closing in on 50, and it's I'm like, man, I got I to gotta lead that. That single buck is uh, keeping me alive. So it was a pretty good cut. Very good. Thank you very much, Dave. How about another big hand for Dave Jewett, everybody? A long-time competitor having an excellent run here. Well, there it is, a new leader in Ram overall points after the single buck. It's Matt Slingerland on top. Matt Koger continues his climb back from his low point during the stock saw an earlier discipline today. We will take a quick break and be back in Milwaukee for more of the U.S. championships, and the underhand is on the way. Welcome back to a great place to experience the joys of summer. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, great crowd on hand. Everybody enjoying the action here in the semi-final round. You have to be in the top four when this is all said and done. We only have two disciplines left, Kevin, starting with the underhand. Yeah, the underhand chop is a great traditional lumberjack event. Before chainsaws, before even handsaws were in the woods, the lumberjack would have to climb on top of the felled tree, the horizontal log. They chop halfway through one side of the log, turn around, and then finish the other side, severing the block in two. First tee to the underhand from left to right, it's going to be Jeff Skirvin, Mike Forrester, Cassidy Shear, Matthew Bolton. Cassidy Shear currently a strong second place tie. Ram overall point. Two disciplines left to go. Apparently coasting toward qualifying for the final. Well, it's an interesting heat. I, I, I'm not even sure which stand to look at, so I'm trying to take it all in. You, you've got, I, I guess the biggest point of interest for me is Cassidy Shear, who's one of the first to turn around. It doesn't mean he's got the job done on the front, but Cassidy Shear is just making a massive leap into the Steel Timber Sports Series. And I think, wow, no, he there definitely go. got the job done. An unreal showing from Cassidy Shear. A young man from Wisconsin, the Shear family is just synonymous with lumberjack shows and all of that world. And Wisconsin's own Cassidy Shear confidently going through these disciplines on his way to qualifying for the finals there, the top spot. Heat number one of the underhand with a 20.76. Bolton, Skirvin, and Forrester after him. Heat number two just about ready to go in the underhand chop. This one features this man right here, Super Dave Jewett. Dave Jewett going up against Matt Slingerland. Matt Slingerland, Curry are currently our leader. Ram overall points. Stand number three, that's Chris Bradshaw. Matt Slingerland on top in terms of Ram overall points and two other choppers very hungry for some Ram overall points. Dave Jewett setting a blistering pace right out of the gate, but it's Chris Bradshaw first around drawing huge slabs of wood. Bradshaw really hurting for some Ram points. This could be a turnaround moment for him. Oh, it's Matt Slingerland continuing dominance of the pool with Bradshaw and Jewett right on his heels. Matt Slinger at good time, 21.18. A close second place to Cassidy Shear at this point with one heat left on the underhand chop. Dave Jewett hanging in there in fourth place. Dave Jewett currently resides in fourth place. Overall points 
as well. So holding his ground as we get closer and closer to the final moments. Final heat of the underhand. On your left stand one, that's Will Roberts, William Roberts, Nathan Waterfields in the center. Matthew Koger, defending champion, going for number five in terms of national championships in Steel Timber Sports Series. Well, Matt Koger showing us just why he thinks he should be a five-time champion, digging himself out of a significant deficit from earlier today. Had a disastrous stock saw and uh, pulled himself all the way back to a tie for second with Cassidy Shear. Matt Slingerland currently on top with 33 points. Dave Jewett that stands now hanging in there with 28. Three, two, one, go. Will Roberts back in the Steel Timber Sports Series. Great to have him back on the stage. Big slap from Matt Koger. Quick turn. Wow. Matt Koger making short work of that one right there. Everyone knew that was a quite likely going to be the outcome. It just happened all so quickly. Look at the penetration of the ax and the technique of Matt Koger just blisters through the backside of that block. The opening blow, that ax went, as they say, straight to the maker's mark, straight to the pin. A great cut from Matt Koger. That's Matt Koger with a 14.71, basically time-wise, Lap in the field here in the underhand chop, taking Pool A very, very effortlessly. Look at Cassidy Shear hanging in there, doing a great job. Third place, Matt Slingerland. Good stuff. What do we just see, my friend? Actually, I kind of messed up a little bit on that log, really, because that log right there probably should have been a uh, new U.S. record, technically. New U.S. record, what do you mean? Tell us what you were thinking. I mean, I was just trying to get a little bit faster, but I mean, really, that log, you know, the hits were going in, tips were coming out. And uh, that probably should have been about a 13 second log, but I don't know if I had it in me right now, but it was a good cut regardless. Matt Slingerland doing a great job of hanging on to the lead and ram over all points as we have one discipline left to go and we look at that all important bubble position. Dave Jewett hanging in there, but we got a very hungry Nathan Waterfield and Will Roberts with a shot at it as well. All will be decided when we come back. The Steel Timber Sports Series on ABC is brought to you by Ram, powered by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram. Duluth Trading, designed and tested by tradesmen. And Dinty Moore, Dinty Moore Beef Stew, the beer of meal says you work hard. Crack open a Stewski. Back in Milwaukee, 2017 Steel Timber Sports Series presented by Ram. U.S. Championships, and we are in Pool A. Ten competitors in this pool. Only four will pass on to the final round, the championship round, and it gets very, very thick. Matt Slingerland, Matt Koger, Kevin Holtz, looking pretty good at the top, but we're going to be a big battle in the course of this hot saw between Dave Jewett, Nathan Waterfield, and Will Roberts. These are not the, uh, the most reliable, predictable <laughs> machines. They're highly modified, customized motorcycle, chainsaw, snowmobile, mix-up, mash-up, just absolute debacles of machinery <laughs> and, and if anything can go wrong it will go wrong in the hot saw first heat of the hot saw a couple of good performers here in the semi-final round in pool a matt slingerland stand number two stand number one cassidy Shear. matt slingerland leader and Ram overall points with 41 points coming into this final event of the day. Very unlikely he'll be taken out of the top four. In fact, uh, no one outside the top four is within 10 points of him. Trouble on stand two. I'm, I'm trying to process what all just happened to us. Let's go back and watch this run for Matt Slingland. There you see first cut, he goes down through the block. The saw pushes him back out of the block on that up cut. Well, this just shows you what happens when you put a, a 60 to 65 horse chainsaw motor in the hands. Even someone the size and stature of Matt Slingerland, it's unreal the power these things have and what it can do to you. Let's contrast that though here with Cassidy Shear. He goes up, he's not putting on a blistering run. Posting times, 
gathering Ram points and moving on. Well, there you go. It was indeed a DQ for our Ram points leader coming into the hot saw, Matt Slingerland. Still, his point cushion should be sufficient. Cassidy Shear marches on. A 10.75. He got the saw started, got three cuts, got his job done. Had a good start, had a good first two cuts, got a little heavy on the saw last cut. I, I caught it, eased up enough. Oftentimes the saw will just die on you there, but I kept it going. Uh, it should be enough to get me through. We'll keep my fingers crossed, hope for the best. Will Roberts on the right, Matthew Bolton on the left. Now, trouble for Matt Bolt on stand one. Looks like Will Roberts got the job done, but man, there's not a lot of real estate for Will Roberts left. There you see the trouble for Matt Bolton. He comes up for his third cut, actually jumps on the far side of that purple crayon mark and had to come back and reshoot. The trouble is though, as soon as you make any cut on the far side of that purple line, it is a disqualification. There's Will Roberts, a good time of 7.83. He started out as far as Ram overall points. Coming into the hot saw, two positions outside the top four and eight points. So there is hope, there is just hope at this point for Will Roberts, depending what transpires in the later heat. Well, here we go with a couple of guys who've had a rough day, both of them, Chris Bradshaw, Mike Forrester. We've had two heats and two DQs so far, so uh, Believe you me, anything can happen here. And on the wood, get set. Oh, trouble for Forrester on two. Synchronized Ooh. sawing from both of these guys. Mike Forrester, look at the determination in his face. He's giving it the mighty Forrester shove. Look at this man, he's trying to stall out a, a nearly 300cc engine, and he just shoves a little too hard. There you go, good time for Chris Bradshaw. A 6.96, significant because knocks down one position, that good cut by Will Roberts, who's very hopeful, open against hope that he can make it into this top four here. That dims his hopes just a little bit right there. Heat number four of the hot saw. Pretty important for Dave Jewett coming in here. Fourth place right on the, right on the edge of making the top four there. Not a good time to have any sort of bobbles or fail to get three cuts in any way. Going up against Matthew Koger coming in here in second place. Two points behind the leader, Matt Slingerland, who's already DQ'd that back in the first heat. Wow, Dave Jewett attacking a very thick first disc. Cutoff disaster for Dave Jewett. That might be the end of his run here in Milwaukee. Well, there you go. That's a heartbreak for Dave Jewett, a DQ right there. Meanwhile, Matt Coger got close to the edge on that one, definitely, but Matt Coger is gonna wind up with a time there, and that's gonna keep him right in the top four. 8.46 for Matt Coger as he heads toward qualification for the finals. There he is, Nathan Waterfield. One spot outside the top four. His opponent in this one, Jeff Skirvin. Jeff Skirvin started out fairly strong today, but uh, hasn't gone very well since the first couple of events. Little hesitation from Waterfield as he gets set up straight and a cutout from Skirvin. Skirvin is likely gonna run out of real estate on a really thin cut from Waterfield on stage two. Let's watch Waterfield here. A little pause, a little hesitation as he gets lined up. You can see his marks on the top of the wood where he wants to be. He was over in terms of real estate on the first cut, over on the second cut, and he's trying to go very thin on that third one. Head judge Rich Hallett went in for a closer look. It seems like everything's okay on stand two. A different case though on stand number one. A tough break for Jeff Skirvin. Well, there he is, Nathan Waterfield was out of the top four coming into this final discipline, the hot saw. Knew he had an opportunity when Dave Jewett 
DQ to Nathan Waterfield with three complete cuts and 825. Puts himself into the fourth spot. And he'll move on to the finals. What a mess that was. I don't even, I can't hardly believe I made it into the finals. And there they are, the four who will advance to the finals. Matt Coger, Cassidy Shear, Matt Slingerland, and Nathan Waterfield. Three of the four have been there before. Cassidy Shear, the newcomer who's in the mix this time around. Yeah, Cassidy Shear is so tremendously well established in climbing and rolling in that aspect of Lumberjack Sports. Just came in and put on a clinic here with Pool A in the, in the semifinal round. Matt Coger did a great job digging himself out of that point deficit. And of course, Matt Slingerland and Nathan Waterfield also in there grabbing some points. Waterfield, I feel like he thinks he's probably the luckiest man alive. He dodged some serious bullets today, and he's going to have to get that straightened out when he moves into the finals. It's time for the Ram Guts and Glory moment, powered by Ram Trucks, official truck of the Steel Timber Sports Series. Let him hold that back, though. Oh, oh no. Forrester down on stand number two as he goes to scoot himself around the backside. He steps on a chip, completely loses his footing, and comes down hard on one of those metal dogs, looks like with his left arm. Down, down I went and kind of hurt a little bit. <laughs> so the next time we see you, we'll deal with Pool B. Also a boatload of talent there. That's next time on the Steel Timber Sports Series, presented by Ram US Championships.